Hello, my name is Mary Lee Lucas. I'm the executive director and curator of the Historical Society here in Clarion. And before you, you see the Society's Sutton Deets House Museum. It's January of 2008, just after Christmas. Let's go inside. Here we are at the front door, and the first room that we're going to see is the parlor. Now, the Sutton Deets House was built in 1850 by Thomas Sutton, and Thomas Sutton was a prominent attorney here in Clarion. Unfortunately, he only had the opportunity to live in his house for three years. In 1853, he contracted typhoid fever and died. Little is known about the family. Uh, the house was in and out of many hands. It was a boys' school in the 1890s called Keller's Academy, and then in 1908, it was purchased by John Dietz, and John Dietz did a complete renovation of the house. Um, much of what you see here is from that time period. All of the woodwork is from the 1908 period. The furniture here in the Sutton Dietz house has all been donated by various people with ties to Clarion County. We have a wonderful square grand piano that has inlays, it has butterflies, and mother of pearl flowers. Our tree is decorated in a Victorian theme, and the toys here are from our collection. They're, they're from various time periods. The earliest one is the baby doll buggy from the 1880s, and the latest one is the little rocker, the little rocking horse from the 1940s. There is, of course, more I could say about this room, but we've got to move on. Here we are in the library. Of note here is this wonderful stenciled ceiling, which was done around 1909 by Mrs. Dietz's brother. And we are very fortunate that it is still intact. One of the reasons that the Sutton Dietz house is in such wonderful period condition is the fact that it was owned by the same family up until the 1970s when it was purchased by the Historical Society. Adjacent to the library is the dining room with its original coffered ceiling dating from 1908. The light fixtures are the original light fixtures that were placed here by the Dietz family. Again, the furniture has all been donated, and we have the table set up as it would be typically in that time period of the early 1900s. The Dietz family had servants that lived here on the third floor that took care of the family. Today, we use this room for Victorian tea parties for red hat groups, for birthday parties. Uh, we just recently had one, a surprise birthday party for one of our members who just turned 90. And we also use it for functions for the public. We recently had first night here. We had musicians right here in the dining room, chamber musicians, and we had a wonderful crowd of about 92 people. You can imagine how full the house was that night. Here we have a hat collection. In the early days, women always wore hats. They wouldn't be out, out of doors without a hat if they were dressed. And these represent all different time periods. The earliest one is a mourning hat. The Victorians were very into mourning and death. And this dates from about the 1850s. The mannequin was part of an exhibit that we did for women's history. She's dressed in a traveling costume. Can you imagine traveling across country on a train or a stagecoach dressed in such a fine garment? The blouse actually has 47 hooks and eyes. We take the corridor from the dining room to the kitchen. It's a mix of many different time periods. The stove is from the 1920s. We have a very early washing machine and ringer in the corner. The telephone is still in use, and I actually use it when people call me over here. The little aprons are part of the Women's History exhibit. I remember my grandmas always wore aprons, and you very seldom see aprons today. They dried many tears, 
they used to carry apples, they did many, many things with their aprons. It was a necessary part of dressing every day. Even for special occasions, uh, we have lace aprons and sheer aprons and eyelid aprons. So they were a very important part of women's costumes. This room has many other gizmos that you would be interested in seeing. We have a churn, we have a sausage stuffer, a candle mold, a coffee grinder, an apple peeler, a toaster, and much more you'll have to come and see. Taking the back stairs, which the servants always used, from the kitchen to the second floor, we will go right into our military room. Exhibits encompass all, all of the wars. We have many interesting things to see from the Civil War, Spanish-American War, First Second World War, Korea, and even Vietnam. Across the hall from the military room is the master bedroom. The most interesting feature in the master bedroom is the bedstead, which is an Eastlake design, and it even has its original straw mattress. Right next door to the master bedroom is the children's room, with many, many toys that made many children very happy in those early years. We have a large doll collection a lot of boys' toys, a very early crib, and a wonderful early hobby horse. Let's descend the master staircase and go to the basement. The basement is a wonderful hodgepodge of things from all different times and places. In the back, we have a little general store set up, complete with medicines and notions, just like you would find in a general store. And here we have a very unusual and rare portable bathtub. And here is a range from the 1940s. We have lanterns from the 1830s to the 1880s, a hand-cranked ice cream maker, rug beaters, a medical display from Clarion County Doctors, and a model that shows how a raft from the early lumbering days was constructed. There's also a model of the limestone grain mill and another that depicts an oil derrick and associated machinery. There's also a model of an iron furnace, bottles from the glass making, and many other interesting and mysterious things to see. I hope you've enjoyed this little whirlwind tour of the Clarion County Historical Society's Museum. We'd very much like you to come and visit.